What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my 2016-2017 Premier League predictions video. Now if you've not seen my Football Manager 2016-2017 predictions video, where basically I let Football Manager do the, you know, the season, it simulates it and it predicts where everyone's going to finish. Go and check that video out first. There'll be a link in the corner of this video right now. But today I'm going to be doing my predictions, I'm going to go through every single team briefly and I'm going to put them in order of where I think they'll finish in the Premier League. Before we start, drop a like on the video, comment down below your predictions and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so in 20th I have got Hull City, like pretty much everyone else that I've seen who have done these predictions videos, they say the same thing. So you're probably bored of hearing about Hull City, but yes, they do only have 13 players fit. They don't have a manager, and they're pretty much in crisis. For me, you know, there's no other position to put them than 20th. They're definitely going to go down, and they could even challenge Derby's lowest ever Premier League tally if their club stays in the same situation. So for me, Hull City are staying in 20th. In 19th, I've got another promoted team in Burnley. I feel like, yes, they've got some decent players. You know, one to mention, Andre Gray. I think he'll get quite a few goals from the season up front. But I just don't feel like overall the squad's strong enough to stay in this division. The Premier League is the strongest I think I've seen it in a long, long time. So for me, Burnley are going to finish 19th and go back down to the Championship. In 18th place, I've got Sunderland. They're a team that toy with relegation every single season. You know, they're there, they're thereabouts. They're in the relegation zone. They just get out, they sack the manager, he gets them out. For me, I just don't think this time... I think they're going to go down. You know, they've got David Moyes in, and yes, he does do all right with clubs, you know, that aren't destined for the top. Like Sunderland, they're going to be near the bottom. You know, when he took over United, he struggled at Everton. When he first took over Everton, were down there, you know, in the bottom half of the table, essentially. And he managed to pull them up into, you know, a European uh, football contender. However, for me, it's just not going to work out for him at Sunderland. I don't think they've got the quality in the squad. They're going to rely on Jermaine Defoe too much for goals, and obviously he's getting on. So for me, I just feel like Sunderland will actually go down this season. In 17th, it's the third of the newly promoted clubs. However, they do actually avoid relegation, unlike the other two. I've got Middlesbrough finishing 17th. They've added some great experience to the squad in Alvaro Negredo and uh, Victor Valdez. Added to that, they've already got Jordan Rhodes, so... You know, he's going to bang in a few goals for them this season, I feel. You know, it's, I believe it's his first season in the Premier League. He's always been in clubs that are pushing for the Premier League. But finally, he's got, you know, he's got his move to Middlesbrough and they have come up. I do feel like he could be influential if he starts scoring goals. For me, Middlesbrough probably just about have enough. I don't think they've got enough to really push up the table. But they've got enough to stay in the Premier League. In 16th place, I've got Watford. Now, they had a great start to the season last uh, campaign, and they're actually in the European qualification places for a long period of time. You know, when Leicester and themselves were up there, leaving like the top five, six, and everyone was like, oh, Leicester will fall off, uh, and Watford will as well. But unlike Leicester, Watford did actually drop off, and they dropped off quite big time, falling into the bottom half of the table. I feel like they'll probably have a worse season this time around. Um, that's just my general opinion. I'm not too sure on the positions of these next few teams. They're kind of interchangeable, but I do have Watford finishing 16th. In 15th, I've got Swansea City. Now, as I said, these few, these couple of teams could be interchangeable, you know, just finishing maybe a place or two different. But I have got Swansea City in 15th. Uh, I think they've, they've got a decent enough squad to, you know, be comfortably clear of relegation. But I just don't feel like, again, they're strong enough to really push into the top half of the table, considering how strong the Premier League teams are this year. Mainly due to the money that's come into the uh, league, you know, through TV rights and so on. I feel like the top half of the table are pretty much nailed on to finish there, and then it's just kind of a scrap in the bottom half of the table. But I've got Swansea City finishing in 15th. In 14th, I've got Bournemouth. They, you know, they, they had a decent season last campaign last time around. And they've added some decent players. I'm just going to name two because obviously I know these two. Brad Smith and Jordan I, both from Liverpool. They paid £21 million combined. Brad Smith being a left-back, Jordan I being the winger. Brad Smith will really, you know, he'll, he'll strengthen the defence. He's, he's not going to, you know, set the world alight, but he's a solid little player. I believe he's only about 22 years of age, maybe 21, something like that, the Australian. And then Jordan I, even younger than him, 
He's got a lot of potential. Kind of sad to see him leave Liverpool, but it's nice to know that we do have the buyback option on Jordan Ibe. If he does go on to have a great season at Bournemouth, he gets game time. We can actually just buy him back, so it's nice to have that. And I think he'll have a good season for Bournemouth. I noticed he's already scored quite a few goals for them in pre-season. So I'm predicting Bournemouth will have a relatively decent season and finish in 14th. In 13th, I have West Brom. Now, as I said, these teams are pretty much interchangeable, but I do have West Brom in 13th place. They're a Tony Pulis side. The you know, they're known to not be easy to beat. Yeah, you do end up most of the time beating them. But they, they are they do give you a good game. And they've obviously got Sedenberry. You know, whether he leaves or not, I'm not too sure. They've also got uh, Rondon. And they've still, you know, they've still got a decent team, to be fair. Uh, Tony Peels is obviously going to have them set up quite well. So, I feel they'll be well clear of relegation, but they're not going to challenge in the top half of the table. In 12th place, I've got Crystal Palace. Now, for me, Palace have made some very, very good business. You know, they've made some very good signings, to be fair. They brought in James Co Tompkins from West Ham, the centre-back. They brought in Steve Mandanda, the goalkeeper. I believe he was from Marseille. I think that was actually a free transfer, which is very, very good business. They've brought in Andros Townsend, I believe, and they've brought in someone else. Who else have they brought in? I can't quite think. It's probably the best player as well. They brought someone else in. They're also looking at Christian Benteke. Now, granted, they have lost Yannick Balassi, or they're, they're looking, to like, uh, looking like they are going to lose Yannick Balassi to Everton, which will be a big blow, but Andros Townsend's come in anyway, so, you know, he kind of... I wouldn't say replaces because I would say Balassi is probably a bit better, but you know, he does kind of fill that role that was situated by Balassi anyway. I do feel like Crystal Palace will have quite a good season, but again, they're one of the teams that's strong, you know, strong enough to avoid relegation, but they're not going to push on to the top half of the table. In 11th place, I've got Stoke City. Now, Stoke are under Mark Hughes, and. It's nice to see him actually playing football with them because Stoke for so long have been called, they've just been like ripped into by the league. They've been called like a rugby team, long ball, you know, they just, they play ugly footy and they're not even playing football most of the time. That's what a lot of people say. But to be fair, under Mark Hughes, he's got them playing a completely different brand of football. Obviously, they had really good players last season. Still got the Marco Nautovic, he signed a new deal. He was linked with Everton, but then he signed a new deal at Stoke, which is nice to see. Uh, they've also got Bojan, they've got uh, Afalai, and they've got they've actually brought Joe Allen in from Liverpool, which is I think is a great signing. I like Joe Allen, I probably would have kept him around maybe for another year or two, but Klopp obviously didn't fancy him, so he's moved on to Stoke, and I think he'll do very well there, especially the type of football Mark Hughes is trying to play with. Um, Stoke, he's obviously trying to get them playing a nice passing football on the floor, keeping the ball short, you know, short passes, very intricate, very ticky tacker just to say. Uh, so I do feel like Stoke will probably have a decent season and they'll finish in 11th. I just don't see them pushing into the top half of the table this season. In 10th, we've got a team that have lost their manager, but they just seem to do well pretty much every season. It's Southampton. So Southampton, if you don't know, they've lost Ronald Koeman to Everton, their manager. They've also lost some key players. Obviously, Pele's gone off to the Chinese Super League. Apparently, because he likes, he's always wanted to play there. He hasn't, he just wants the money. Uh, Satio Mane's joined Liverpool, and Victor Wanyama has gone to Tottenham. So, they're some of the key, you know, players that have left. I'm not too sure if anyone else has. If they have, do let me know. Uh, Stecklenburg, I believe he was at Southampton, wasn't he? He's gone to Everton. Um, so, for me, they've lost quite a few players. They've brought in Nathan Redmond and Hodgenberg. I can't say the guy's name. He's the Bayern Munich. Uh, we all know him on Football Manager as a wonder kid. He, play, he used to play for Bayern Munich. They brought him in. Not too sure on anyone else they brought in, but I do feel like Southampton should probably just have enough to make it into the top half of the table this time around, and they'll probably finish 10th. Okay, in 9th, we've just spoke about Southampton, who lost Ronald Koeman. Everton have gained Ronald Koeman. I've got Everton in 9th. They've um, obviously brought in a new manager. They're looking to bring in Yannick Balassi. They've brought in Ashley Williams, which I think is a great signing. For £12 million, he really strengthens that defence. Obviously, got captaincy, you know, experience at Swansea. Really, really solid uh, signing. Really good bit of business there from Everton. As for outgoings, Everton have lost John Stones, and they could end up losing Lukaku, which obviously would also be a big loss. But for me, I do feel like Everton have got enough to be in the top half of the table. That's why I put them in ninth, but I just don't see them pushing on any further than that. I feel the other teams above them are much stronger than they are. In eighth, I've got a team that had a really good season last time round, West Ham. Uh, obviously, they love Dimitri Payet. They've brought in, they've brought in uh, Faguli from Valencia. They've also, I believe they're trying to sign another striker. I don't know if that's actually gone through or not. Uh, I believe it's Carlos Bakker. I'm not too sure if I'm right on that. 
Um, as for outgoings, James Tompkins, I mentioned he's left for... Who's he left for? Crystal Palace. I'm not too sure if anyone else is left of note. Um, I know Andy Carroll's actually playing quite well for them. I noticed he uh, got two goals against Juventus in a friendly. Um, the European football is the only concern for me. They do have Europa League football. And if they take that seriously, their league performance could really get hindered. You see it every time. You can say all you want. It's not going to have any impact. But honestly, the stats don't lie. It does. When you play in Europe, you are, you know, it's, the stats show you're tired at that weekend afterwards. So it depends on how far they go in the Europa League for me. I believe they'll probably get through the group stage, but then probably go out at the next round. Or they may even go out at the group stage. And if they do, that's why I put them in uh, eighth place. In seventh, we've got last year's champions, Leicester City. Obviously, the loss of Kante is a huge, huge blow in my opinion. He was pretty much at the heart of everything they've done. They brought in Mendy, who's, you know, seen to be a replacement. Whether he ends up living up to that expectation, I'm not too sure. Riyad Mahrez is obviously key, you know, he's he's huge part of the speculation around a move to Arsenal. Jamie Vardy's also had that pressure in his mind, but I believe Vardy's going to stay. Claudio Ranieri signed a new four-year deal, I believe it was. So Leicester... As a whole, they've kept most of the key players, but obviously losing Kante is a big blow. They've brought in uh, Musa, is it? The uh, winger. I don't know if I've said his last name right. I know who the guy is. Musa, Musa, whatever you want to call him. He's a very talented player. He, be I believe he scored two goals, didn't he, against Barcelona in preseason friendly. He looked decent in the games I've watched of Leicester in preseason. I think he could be really influential for them this season. Jamie Vardy, obviously, if he can score 20-plus goals again. He'll obviously, you know, propel them up the league. But for me, I just don't see them repeating what they did done last season. I don't think they'll even get into Champions League. Purely because they do have Champions League football this season, it's going to be much more difficult on that squad to replicate anything quite near what they done last season. Okay, this is where it gets tricky, and this is where I probably get a lot of dislikes on the video. The top six, honestly... I'm not just saying this because it's going to cause controversy. I do genuinely feel like the top six could be, you know, they literally any any of the top six could win the league this season. But for me, Arsenal are probably in the weakest position right now. I've got them in sixth. Arsenal need to sign a striker and they need to sign a centre-back. At the time of making this video on the 12th, so today, it's actually going to go up today. They've not signed a striker, they've not signed a centre-back. They've Well, they have signed a centre-back, but he's a young lad from Bolton. I don't see him as a first-team player. He may be, but I don't think he's going to be, you know, Arsene Wenger's first choice. Um, so for me, they still need to strengthen. They've obviously brought in Granit Xhaka, which I think is a great player. It's someone that they've been calling out for for years, a defensive mid. But for me, Arsenal are the least strongest team in that top six, purely because they've not strengthened in the key areas that they needed to. So for me, Arsenal are finishing sixth. In fifth, this was a really tricky one. I've actually done this video two or three times already. And I actually had Chelsea in first. Then they had them in third. Now I've got them in fifth. Just from listening to other people's predictions. And it kind of makes sense. So Chelsea don't have any European football. That's why I actually have them in first. Because they have no European football. And they're going to be very, very difficult to beat. However, it's all well and good being difficult to beat. But I don't know if they've got enough goals in that squad. Because apparently Conte is very similar to Jose Mourinho and how he manages. You know, difficult to beat, which we've already seen. But in terms of his managerial style, he's very, like, cutthroat. You know, if something, if it's going wrong, he lets you know. And Eden Hazard does not react well to that, neither does Diego Costa. Them two players, if it's not going right for Chelsea, they're not going to show up like they did last season. That's just my opinion. You know, I'd, I'd like to see them prove them wrong, me wrong because Eden Hazard, the season before last, was a very, very good player. He won... PFA player of the year and so on it'd be nice to see a player like that again in the Premier League and from him yeah I'm not Chelsea's biggest fan but when he was on form he was on form but for me if it goes wrong with Chelsea it's going to go wrong and I've already seen them this preseason because they played Liverpool they were very difficult to break down granted but they they beat us 1-0 it was a goal from a corner and let's face it anyone can score a corner against Liverpool and um, so they didn't actually offer any other threat than that so I feel like the goals could be dry for Chelsea this season. And if you're not scoring, fair enough, you're not conceding either. I believe there's going to be a lot of draws for Chelsea this season. Just purely because I don't think they've got enough goals. And I don't think teams are going to score many against them either. So I've got Chelsea in fifth. Okay, in fourth, you're probably going to say I'm biased because I support them. But genuinely, if I was being biased, I'd have Liverpool first. But I've got them in fourth. 
I feel like everyone takes the piss out of Liverpool. You know, uh, Liverpool, they always say it's their year, blah, blah, blah. But I do, I don't think it's going to be our year, but I do think we're going to surprise a lot of people this season. The signings Klopp has made is exactly what we needed. Granted, we still need a left back and he's not signed one. So that's my only concern. But apart from that, we needed a new keeper, brought one in. We needed pace in the side, brought it in. We needed centre-backs, brought two in. So he's addressed the problems directly rather than just touching up the squad here and there, bringing in some extra depth and so on. He's actually improved what we needed to improve upon. We've looked pretty decent in pre-season. There's been a few up and downs. Beating Barcelona 4-0 at Wembley, very, you know, very convincing. Then we went and lost the next day 4-0 to uh, Mines, obviously Klopp's old team, so... It's been a bit of an up and down preseason, but I feel like Klopp's, you know, the fact that we've got no European football, we can just focus on the league. Klopp's essentially had an eight month preseason with Liverpool because last season he was just getting used to the squad. So I do feel like we can really kick on this season and get top four. In third, I've got Tottenham. Now, this season could go one of two ways for Tottenham. Obviously, they've got Champions League football to focus on, so that's going to be quite a hindrance to them. But we've seen what they've done last season when they realised they had to focus on the league. They just disregarded European football, and I wouldn't be surprised if they've done that again, you know, when it gets to the knockout rounds. I don't feel they've strengthened enough. They have brought in two very good signings in Victor Wanyama, and they brought in the striker from the Eredivisie. Can't quite recall his name, but I believe it was around 27 million, something like that. So, obviously, they are strengthening certain positions, but I do feel like they needed to add a bit more, because as we've seen, they just completely dropped off towards the end of the season. They was. They, they were one of the favourites for the league because everyone thought Leicester were going to drop off. They didn't really make a challenge of it. And eventually they did end up finishing third behind Arsenal. When it looks certain all season that they were going to finish above Arsenal. So I do feel like they probably needed to strengthen a bit. I do like Maurizio Pochettino as a manager. I do feel like he can deliver Champions League football for them again this season. That's why I've got Tottenham in third. Okay, so we've got the two Manchester clubs. Who's going to finish first? Who's going to finish second? For me, Jose Mourinho is going to finish second with Man United this season. Obviously, big talk and point to Paul Pogba signed for like £90 million of world record transfer fee. He's also brought in Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Henrik Mkhitaryan and Eric B Bailey, Bailey Ali. I don't know how to say the guy's name. I've already addressed this. I feel like Mourinho's sort of addressed Man United's problems, but not completely. I still feel like the defence isn't strong enough. De Gea in goal probably wins you 10-15 points a season, but I feel like the defence probably still isn't strong enough. And midfielders, Man United midfield's been weak for a few seasons now. I think they probably would have been better spending that £90 million on two £45 million centre midfielders, probably would have made more sense. But obviously, they just wanted to bring Paul Pogba back. They wanted the big, you know, the big transfer saga. They wanted the world to talk about them, which is what they've got. And everyone says Jose Mourinho delivers, you know, in his first couple of seasons and then he gets off. Yeah, he does. But I don't think he's going to deliver the Premier League. He may win a... He likes to win the Capital One Cup. He may win that. He may do well in Europe. He's in the Europa League. I don't know if he's going to take that seriously or not. But I do feel like he's going to put Man United in a decent title, you know, challenging position. But I just don't think they're going to win it. So obviously, you can tell by now, Manchester City, I am predicting to win the Premier League. Obviously, I rarely rate Pep Guardiola as a manager. Top, top quality manager, in my opinion. And if he gets everything right this season at Man City, they could be unstoppable. Um, they've got a great team. They already did. For me, they had the best, the best team in the league already and then they've gone and strengthened on it they brought in john stones they brought in nalito they brought in leroy sane they brought in a couple of young talented players but they've not brought them in you know like if you're buying a young talented player usually you pay like five million for them they're paying like 25 30 million pounds for some young players that not many people have heard of if you play football manager you probably have heard of them but you know city are showing that they mean business i just feel like if john stones shows consistency like he probably didn't at Everton a lot of people don't think he's shown a great deal of consistency at Everton but if he does at Manchester City and he gets it right then they've got a solid back four Aguero's always going to bang you about 20 goals a season and then obviously the players behind them probably can get 10 goals each you know each season they can literally De Bruyne probably get 10 Sané if he you know plays well get 10 Sterling he can get 10 David Silva he can get 10 yeah, yeah, Torre will even get 10 goals a season, you know, so they've got goals right throughout that team. I just feel like Manchester City 
I'm probably going to outscore a lot of teams very easily this season and they're going to win the league. So I'm putting Manchester City in first. Okay, so that's my Premier League predictions done. I'm going to come back to the video at the end of the season and see how wrong I was, most likely anyway. And I'll probably get ripped for it throughout the season. You know, you'll probably end up seeing Stoke or someone in first place and you're like, ah, you put Stoke 11th. I don't really care. A lot of people predicted Leicester to finish like 17th last season and they won the league. So I'm not saying Stoke are going to win it. That was purely an example. But thank you all for watching. As I said before, drop a like on the video. Comment your predictions as well. And check out the Football Manager predictions video. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.